guys, welcome or welcome back to Sissy Spaces. Today's video is a cook and clean with me. I want to try this new recipe I found online, and I also need to clean my bedroom, bathroom, and walk in closet. I was online looking for Christmas decor and stumbled across this recipe. It's called Mom Sausage Roll, and it only has three ingredients and a quick prep time. I also want to make my traditional breakfast items with old fashioned chicken flavored grits and cheesy scrambled eggs in case someone in the family doesn't like the sausage roll. So we'll get the grits started first and then we'll make the sausage roll. calls for two pounds of pork sausage. So I'm gonna use this Tennessee Pride Mild Country Sausage that I purchased at Walmart. I think the hardest part of this recipe was opening the sausage. I noticed my water was boiling for the grits, so I wanna give this sausage a quick smash and then stir my grits into the boiling water. The key to cooking old-fashioned grits is patience. It requires a lot of stirring on low heat and the right ratio of grits to water. My ratio is eight cups of water to two cups of grits. The sausage is cooked pretty quickly, so here I am wiping out the frying pan I cooked it in, and I've placed the sausage in a storage container and set aside until the oven is done preheating to 350 degrees. I also want to gather my supplies for the cheesy scrambled eggs. I'm going to prep the scrambled eggs and refrigerate them until my sausage roll is in the oven. using the silk almond milk instead of regular milk. It has calcium and vitamin E in it, and it's easier on my stomach because it's free from dairy, gluten, and artificial colors and flavors. It took some time getting used to after drinking whole milk all these years, but it's all I drink now. I know it seems overkill to use cracked pepper and ground pepper, but there is a difference. The cracked pepper adds texture to your food while the ground offers no texture at all. Also, the cracked pepper is more potent and which, in my opinion, enhances the taste of the food. I had to take another look at the recipe. I forgot it needed scrambled eggs as well as some beaten egg mixture to brush over the dough before placing in the oven. using a lot of cookware when cooking because that's more items to clean when I'm done. 
but I needed a frying pan for the sausage, another frying pan for the plain scrambled eggs that's included in the recipe, and a third frying pan for my cheesy scrambled eggs. The sausages are done as well as the scrambled eggs. The next recipe item is the dough, but first I need to prep my baking dish. I like using parchment paper when baking because it makes cleanup a breeze. Also, parchment paper is easy to use because it's not sticky and it's resistant to grease and humidity. Pillsbury refrigerated pizza crust. It's easy to use because you just unroll it on the parchment paper, add your toppings, and bake. But this recipe also asks that you brush your rolled dough with beaten egg mixture or egg wash. By doing this, your dough will have a gold color and gloss after baking. See, I like adding my dishes straight from the cooktop to the sink. This would allow it to soak, making it easier to clean later. I also want to place the grits in a storage dish so the pot can soak as well. Now that the sausage roll is in the oven and my grits are done, I can get started on the cheesy scrambled eggs. I also want to keep an eye on my sausage roll to ensure it doesn't burn. done except the sausage roll. The recipe asks that you bake the sausage roll between 30 to 45 minutes. I baked it at first for 30 minutes but returned it to the oven for an additional 10 because the dough was soft to the touch. Once the dough was stiff to the touch at the 10 minute mark, I removed it. The ends of the sausage roll didn't have much cheese, sausage, and eggs, so I wouldn't recommend eating that piece first. It tasted like a lot of dough, but once I tried a centerpiece, it was delicious. The combination of sausage, eggs, and cheese made a great breakfast burrito, and the family loved it so much they asked that I bake it next time using burrito shells versus the dough. a cup of coffee and a pastry it was time to tackle the mess. I wouldn't usually show you my messes but when trying new recipes I always make more of a mess than usual. I know it doesn't seem like much but if you've been with my channel for a while you know this is not typical of me. The dishes that are already in the dishwasher are from last night. It wasn't a full load, so I didn't start it. When loading my dishwasher, I tried to place my cookware in it, but when it's something as small as this pot, I don't mind. 
The cookware I just used today though will be washed and dried by hand. a habit of placing a cascade pot in the dishwasher even if we don't turn it on. This lets everyone know in the household that the dishes in the dishwasher are dirty. I always forget like I did today. As you can see, this cookie pan is not dirty at all because I used the parchment paper. I still wash it before putting it away though, just in case there's food residue on it from the oven. always refreshing to clean my sink. This lets me know the only tasks left to finish cleaning the kitchen are wiping down the appliances, counters, eat-in table, vacuuming, and mopping if needed. knife away I remember that I need to sharpen it as well as the others I have. If you don't have a knife sharpener you can use the unglazed rim around the bottom of your ceramic plates, bowls, and cups but be careful though. After cutting my hand while doing this my husband purchased a steel sharpener. a lot of dish towels in our home because we always have to dry the floors after doing the dishes. We have laminate floors so it's important to wipe up any water found because the standing water can cause the floors to bubble up and swell and it can also separate the seams or fade the floor's color. I'm using Clorox wipes to clean my counters and cooktop today. I like using these after cooking because it speeds up the process of cleaning and disinfecting surfaces because you don't need any preparation before using them. Now that my cooktop is clean, I want to disinfect my countertops. Clorox wipes work great as a disinfectant because you can use them in many different areas of your home. But I advise you to check the manufacturer's guidelines when using them on doorknobs, cabinet pulls, and faucets. I left a scratch on this table and I'm trying to match the color stain before buffing it out. I have a hard time matching stain colors. I'm still looking for a stain for the breakfast tray that's located on the ottoman in the family room. I'm gonna vacuum the floors in the kitchen today because I mopped them last week. I also wanna finish up in here so I can clean my bedroom, bathroom, and walk-in closet.
This hot traffic area always stays dirty because it leads to the back patio. I wanted to use rug tape to keep this rug in place, but I remove it twice a day to shake and vacuum, so there's no point. Before cleaning my bedroom, I want to spray my vinegar water dawn solution in the sinks, shower, and toilet first to give it time to work. Most cleaning products require time to sit in order for it to be effective. This solution is no different. We're having work done in our home, so we've had to rise a little earlier than usual. As such, my cleaning routine changed. This morning, instead of making my bed, I decided to go ahead and cook breakfast first. I'll resume my normal cleaning routine next week once all the repairs are done. While I'm doing these voiceovers, hubby is grilling chicken for dinner. This past week, we celebrated 32 years of marriage, which to me has flown by. We celebrated by hanging around the house and relaxing, something I thoroughly enjoyed. We were married after only knowing each other for three weeks. We are true soulmates and we knew it the moment we met. Now that it's getting cooler in the evening, so I'm gonna add a second duvet insert to our bed. I add it between the flat sheet and the coverlet, similar to what you'll see in hotel rooms. Our downstairs gets a lot cooler during the winter nights because the heat rises. So to keep our gas bill low, I add an additional duvet insert to our bed. This is a heavy duvet insert, but I'm still going to add that additional insert next week. Believe it or not, South Atlanta gets pretty cold at night, and starting next week, it'll be in the 30s. I want to dust our blinds today because our house has been pretty dusty since the start of repairs. I'll wipe them clean with a wet microfiber cloth once all the repairs in the home have been completed. I want to use the spray away glass cleaner on the glass of my fireplace. I would normally wipe it with a wet microfiber cloth, but when I turned on the fireplace last night, there were tons of streaks. I figured since it's safe to use on my wall art and mirrors, it would do just fine on the glass of the fireplace. Dust the entire fireplace first before applying this railway glass cleaner to the face of the fireplace. Before I apply any wet products to my surfaces, I always dry wipe it first. You may not see me do it every time, but it's done. I first clean
opening the glass of this um, more, I was nervous that I would ruin the wood surrounding the glass because you should never use glass cleaner on wood, but it hasn't damaged it at all. But I still don't recommend using glass cleaner on wood. regular ceramic salad bowl. I use it to store keys and remotes in it sometimes and during the holidays I place pine cones in here. I say all that to say you don't have to purchase special bowls as decor. Use your favorite dishes instead. I got a little carried away with the spray away glass cleaner. I like the clean fresh scent it leaves behind, so sometimes I spray just a little too much. ceramic towel surrounded in a tub. I don't spray anything on it, but use the same microfiber cloth that I use to clean the window. We rarely use this tub, so I'm mainly wiping away dust. I've already sprayed the inside of the sink, so I only need to spray the vinegar, water, and Dawn solution on the faucet. Also, on Prime Day, I ordered a ceramic tile attachment to this Rubbermaid scrubber, and I'll show it to you when I clean the ceramic tile in the shower. These drawers restained or painted. I accidentally spilled face wash and it splashed on these drawers. When I wiped it off, some of the stain came off as well. I stopped using that face wash after that happened because I figured if it could remove stain, I may not want to put it on my face. Also, I finally replaced the stems with these burgundy stems from Hobby Lobby. I usually don't purchase colorful stems for my home, but I couldn't pass up the price. They were 75% off at the time of purchase. Again, I purchased the burgundy stems from Hobby Lobby as well as the tray. The black vase is from Walmart and the lidded dish and cloture from Anthropology. Along with the angle brush head on this drill, I'm going to also use the new ceramic tile brush attachment to my Rubbermaid scrubber. I noticed I had some spots I couldn't get to with the drill attachment brush head, but this scrubber was able to fit in that small spot and remove the crud that was there. As you can see, I sprayed a lot of spray away glass cleaner on my shower doors, but prior to that, I had already sprayed my vinegar, water, and Dawn solution on the glass, and it sat for at least 10 minutes before adding the spray away glass cleaner. I found this combo works wonders on water spots, but to prevent water spots from the beginning, you need to dry all the water off the glass before the water evaporates. I 
Frank Sprayaway glass cleaner on the exterior of my doors. I didn't add my vinegar mixture because the exterior of my glass doors doesn't have water spots. I like having this spray attachment to rinse off all the solution. They have something similar on faucets now, but I refuse to purchase new faucets when these work just fine. Again, I'm using my vinegar mixture on the hubby's side of our bathroom as well as my Rubbermaid scrubber. His vanity is much smaller than mine, so this is always an easier and quicker clean. After wiping down these items and organizing them, we're done. Again, his vanity is always the easiest to clean in this bathroom. We're now in the toilet room and I want to wipe down this small art piece above the toilet. I like placing art in my toilet room just to give it a little something. Also one of you asked me what's my least favorite area to clean and of course it's the toilet. It's not that much work, it's just gross but somebody has to do it. Whenever I clean my toilets, I also wipe down the toilet brush and plunger containers. By doing this every time, it prevents odor and bacteria from spreading. Also, I would love to use the disposable cleaners, but we have a septic system, so it's not recommended. <laughs> I recently purchased the lavender scented wet mopping cloths. It has a pleasant scent, but the original scent is my favorite. you guys this before but I like using these swifter wet pads versus my steamer because it's less bulky and it has minimal maintenance as you can see when you're done with these wet pads you just throw them in the trash also I need to take out my trash because it's pretty full I've kept the door to the closet closed while the work is being done in my home, so it's not that bad. But I still want to hit the areas of dust that I do see, clean my mirror, and vacuum. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy's Faces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.